Okay, let's continue where we left off. Before we created a web service that gave a JSON uh, response type, and what we're going to do now is let's hook our database into this instead of providing static um, data, test data. So first thing we're going to do is let's open up uh, Visual Studio again. Okay, and um, let's look at adding our um, entities object. So what we're going to do um, is we're going to actually get rid of this here in a second. So what we're going to do is we're going to go click on our project name, choose add, new item, choose ADO.net data model. We're going to call this ice cream. model and then we're going to choose add we're going to choose EF designer from database hit next you're going to choose your data data connection so um, mine is just sitting on my local host so I would just type local host hit this there's my database that test connection all good Okay, so you're going to get this here, and this is going to give you uh, the connection name that's going to add to your web config file. So remember that. I'll show you where that goes later. Hit next. I'm going to choose Entity Framework 6 because I have two different versions installed on my machine. It's going to go out to my database and grab the objects, my tables that I have. I'm going to choose all my tables, but if you had store procedures or any views, you could include those as well. And I'm going to leave it as my Viviscape ice cream model. It's going to be the namespace. That'll be important, so I usually copy that for later. Then I hit finish. Okay. It's going to generate the file for us and well that's going um, boom okay there it is uh, I have the web config open so that's why it's asking me to save it typically if it's not open it won't do that for you so since it did do that let's go and look at it real quick okay so what it added was this our providers for the SQL client and here's our database connection the one I told you about so it goes and plugs that in here okay so now that's in there let's jump back over to our web service and um, just to point out some of the things here you have um, since we included that in the main project we have that flavors table so that's now an object this is from the database, from the model. It's pulling the, the architecture over from Entity Framework. So one thing you can do just to point this out, let's go and jump in the model. This is the name of the objects that it pulled over from the database, along with my field names and types, properties. Okay, all right, let's jump back over here. Okay, so we created a custom class object to respond. So a quick dirty way to do this is we know these are the properties we're going to use. Um, typically, typically, I just go in here and I like to use this using. And we'll use our um, entities object like so. And I usually call it DB or some people use context. Um, but this is this makes a little bit more sense do that and then I wrap this what this is going to do is going to open a it's going to create an instance of the DB context sorry about that it's going to create a new instance of the DB context so that you can use it um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to create an object called data and then we're going to do a DB. We're going to use link here. DB where DB flavors where. And this is just a lambda. 
is just a short way of typing this, where W is going to stand for the flavors object. W dot bit discontinued equals false because we want all active flavors. And we're going to save that to a list. So this becomes a list of um, DB context flavors. So next what we want to do is we want to um, convert this, our flavors, like we have here, equals new. And we're putting this in a custom object. So we're going to do it this way. And we're going to put it in an array, like so. So what's going to happen, now your properties are contained within here. Now, um, what you can do, a quick way to do this, um, what's, which is nice, it shows you which ones you haven't populated yet. Um, so what, what I usually do is something like this. I go in and I use the data from up top here and then I select them. And I use the lambda again. So that's going to be our flavor. Flavor. And this is just a really short way of populating this. And this is going to be saved to list. Because that's what our return type is, to list. So what we're going to do is take um, all of these properties here, like so. If you hold the Alt key down, you can do this. Copy and paste. And then what I want to do is populate the information in here. F dot. There's our flavor. Field for the flavor. And then our cost is going to be F. It's going to be F. Oops, sorry about that. You're going to have F dot cost. You can start typing it in too, like that. You can have a comma. And since these, um, the reason why it's throwing that error is because of um, the these objects from the database are are uh, they can be null, nullable, but this property from our class is not nullable, so it can't save it as a null. So what we're doing is we're coalescing it and telling it that um, if it is null, then set it as zero. So same thing for price. And that's usually for non-strings that'll do that. There's our stock. Set him to zero. And our flavor is, and you'll see with this one here, is our flavor ID is it's a it's a unique identifier it's a primary key so it never can be null so we don't have to do it there and, and discontinue and same thing with this one because it can be We'll just say if it's null, then it's false. Same thing with this one. Featured. If it's null, then it's false. We'll just do it just like that. All right. Okay, so we have all of that populated, and it's going to save it to a list. Can do a little build check here if we want. We might get rid of this stuff. We'll get rid of all that test data because we don't need it anymore. Do a little build. You're probably gonna see an error there. Oh, it's an int, but it's not. So, like, okay, what you're seeing here is in our stock is because we have conflicting property types. Right now, um, we're returning an integer from the database. In our class, if a quick way to jump to it, let's go look at it, right click on this and go to definition. We've got int 
Okay. Let's go back. Saying our properties int, saying that this is a decimal. Okay. So what we want to do is change this to decimal. And then what will happen is this should automatically, let's go ahead and build this again. It will automatically correct that. Now, um, typically the naming convention, uh, that one's not appropriate. Usually this would be um, a DEC, but we just have it in for right now as integer. We'll fix that later. Um, but that's all you have to do to create that. And what's going to happen is we should be able to build this just fine. And we're successful. So what we want to do now is let's go in and let's go into this table of flavors and let's add some data so we can make sure this is working. Um, let's do a...